Let's stand as we're able, please, and we're joining in the call to worship. We're seeing our printed bulletins. They're on the ends of the pews. Hope you have those. We'll together. Come and rejoice in God. Praise, and praise to God, who continually blesses our lives. In the midst of troubles and stress, God is near, offering compassion. Our, our hope, hope is in the Lord. Lord. Let all the people praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And let's uh, offer one another signs of reconciliation and love. Mainly we're waving at each other and smiling. <laughs> Peace and Christ to each other. <laughs> And we'll reaffirm our faith using the historic uh, Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May be seated. Our first lesson this morning comes from Paul's uh, first letter to the Thessalonians. Generally, we think of this being one of the earliest, if not the earliest, uh, writing uh, in the New Testament. From the fifth chapter, verses 16 through 24, Paul writes, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets. But test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Yeah, children. <laughs> Means that God is with us 
She was telling the story of the birth of Christ.
Go to God in prayer again. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day and for every way that your Son, our Savior, uh, continues to rescue all of us and all of your people everywhere. And we all need it. And we all continue point towards you and your grace and your love for what it can mean not just for us right here but really for everyone for whom we pray everyone for whom those that we pray for pray for and everyone that has no prayer yet except the promise that you've made through your son the, the church and the witnesses that you call forward. We ask that in the midst of a desert world that you continue to bless uh, the message of your son throughout. We pray for, for those that we are especially concerned about who are sick, for those that are receiving care, for promises of, of vaccine and treatment, for those that uh, they give of themselves uh, to bring and work in your healing ministries, for all who stand by and care and pray and help. We ask that you be with those who have suffered loss of any kind continue to bring comfort in every despair and hope in, in joy and in sadness. We're thankful that you continue to call us to be a church and for all that you give us of, of those that uh, present needs to us and we have chances for you to answer those through us and our resources. We're thankful for those that you bring to, to be with us and to help us on the way. And in the, the season of Advent, looking towards Christmas, we're reminded again and again uh, of the miracle of your Son, our Savior, Jesus, we gather and worship in his name. We pray in his name. And as your people right now, as your children right now, we pray together as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Our chapter of John. We start in verse 6 through 8 and continue 19 through 28. 
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the word of God for thus the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, all the things that bind and hold us. All the things that give us cause for anxiety and distraction from your work, God. I'd ask that you would help us lay that down at the foot of the cross. So that we can be reminded of your hope, of the peace you give, and of the joy that sustains us. I invite each and every one of you to silently name three persons during this worship service that they may be blessed. I invite you to name two things on your heart that hold you and to let them go. Now with your eyes open, I ask that you would pray for me. That God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. All glory and honor to you, God. Amen. Who are you? And what do you say about yourself? This is an Advent story as the People are preparing their hearts and minds for the coming of the Messiah, though they don't know how, they don't know when, they don't know in what way. And it's a story of conflict. You don't generally walk up to someone and say, who are you? What are you doing here? By whose authority? The higher up people sent me down to check in on you. It's kind of a, ugh. it's a conflicting story. But you know what? It's a story that we today, as we prepare for 2020 Christmas, we can relate. We can relate to a time of Advent <coughs> that doesn't seem like it's going right. That's anxious filled. There's uncertainty. Lord knows there's a lot of arguing happening these days, isn't there? Well, this. 2020 year, our traditions are a little different, but the one tradition that I hold, maybe most dear, is Christmas movies. Those are not canceled. <laughs> I met with a woman yesterday who said she's watched 40, 40, 40 days and 40 nights of Hallmark Christmas movies. She counted them. I told her to stop counting. I thought that might help. Now, Hallmark's not my thing, you know, the it's always a city girl who goes to the country, who meets a man in flannel, who's like Santa, or he has Christmas trees, it's always great. And they fall in love, save Christmas, and they kiss at the end, and it's wonderful, right? 
Yeah. I see some nods. It's okay if you like those. That's okay. That brings you joy. You do it. I gotta tell you, um, one of my favorite Christmas movies, because it, it hits a little too close to home, is the Griswold Family Christmas. <laughs> Lord have mercy, I see myself in that family. You know, the aunt wraps the cat. Oh. Right? And the tree, like, burns, and then there's a squirrel. That's the best part of the movie. Squirrel! And they run from one side to the other, and the whole place gets trashed. And the mom goes, maybe we should just, like, not do Christmas this year. And I, oh, I feel that. I feel that. And the favorite line is when the husband goes, no, we're on the threshold of this bad word that I will not say in congregational settings. We can't back down now. We're going to have Christmas, whether it kills us, and we're going to like it. Isn't that, whoo, doesn't that feel like Christmas? We do have a good time at my house, if you're worried. We do. Um, what's your favorite Christmas movie? What's that? Yeah? Elf. Elf. Oh, yes. Christmas movie. <laughs> I see some faces. Which one would it be? Die Hard. Die Hard. <laughs> now, some of y'all may not know Die Hard is a Christmas movie. But it is. We'll argue about it later. What else? I heard another one. Gremlin. Gremlin. <laughs> the Grinch. How the Grinch stole Christmas. I made a mom mistake. And showing Emma that one. That's one Caleb and Corey love. She's never been afraid of anything we've watched. Jim Carrey terrified my daughter. That is the, <laughs> the first night I went to put her down, and she kept pointing at the closet. And I kept looking like, what do you see? I don't see. Poor, oh, Mike had to sit up with her. She, we don't say the Grinch were in our house. But 2020 is kind of a Grinch. The Grinch did not hate Christmas. He hated people. I'd argue that one with you after worship too. So to wipe the Grinch out of our house to save the day, we watched a Christmas Carol, the Muppets Christmas Carol. Now, any good literature comes with Muppets. Uh, you know, there's no cheeses for us nieces. It is a, um, it's, it's classic film, if you're looking for classic. But at the end of this musical involving frogs and pigs and um, lots of, yes, they would say they're real, but these puppets, Michael Caine, looking a lot younger, he sings a song, he's Scrooge. He sings, with a thankful heart and with endless joy. With a growing family, every girl and boy will be nephew and niece to me, will bring love, hope, and peace to me. Yes, and every night will end and every day will start with a grateful prayer and a thankful heart. Now, that's a sermon right there, y'all. Muppets and all, but you know, we don't all get a visit from three to four Christmas ghosts on Christmas Eve to reset our hearts. We don't always get to have someone come back in and say, ah, oh, look at your past. Look at the things you're grateful for. Look at your presence. Look at, look at the things that you can be engaging in and look, look to what your future. I think I'm not sure I'd come out of that experience singing or if I would uh, seek medical help if I had floating ghosts come into my presence. But Michael Caine as Scrooge, he, he takes that experience. He looks at his life. He's humbled by his choice not to love his neighbor. And he comes out singing. 
And even though everything's the way it was 12 hours ago, he's still got a lot of rebuilding to do in relationships. One song and a turkey doesn't fix everything. But he says with a thankful heart and with endless joy. How do we find joy? How do we find joy in a season where it doesn't feel right? We remember back to maybe our, our childhood when Christmas seemed to magically happen. Or you remember in your young parenthood where Christmas didn't magically happen, but it, it was worth it. Maybe you're thinking this year's, you're mourning it. And you're not alone in that. That first Christmas wasn't the way it was supposed to be. We know that uh, we've had Jen Webb and we've had Kendall help us with the Gospel of Luke this week. We know that the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary in uncertain circumstances, in a world that was still broken and hurt, in a world where people would question and argue. She was given a beautiful blessing. And she turns and she says, my soul, my very being, all of the atoms and cells that make me up, the breath of God within my lungs, magnifies Amen. the Lord. Yes. And my spirit rejoices. Her spirit rejoices facing 40 weeks of pregnancy. Facing an uncertain marriage. Facing a world that was not as forgiving as our world is today, maybe. But her spirit rejoices because she knows within herself, she knows God, she has joy in God because God will lift up the lowly. He will hold the brokenhearted. He will encourage the disenfranchised. He will fill the hungry with good things. He will guide and grant us the ability to go and give to those who are in need. We find joy because we know that God has been with us. God is with us. And God will continue to be with us. Our Compass Band helped us a few seconds ago with a song that I hold dear called Rescue Story. This song says that you were the voice in the desert, calling me out in the dead of night, fighting my battles for me. You are my rescue story. You lifted me up from the ashes, carried my soul from death to life, bringing me from glory to glory. You are my rescue story. There is a voice calling. There was a voice calling. There will be always a voice calling us. And we get to choose who sends us. That's what this scripture today is all about. These priests and Levites, they say we are sent by the Pharisees. We responded to a voice calling us to go and demand answers, to ask for questions of authority, to kind of get some sense of control over what exactly are you doing out here giving people hope? It makes us uncomfortable. What are you doing? But John says mm -mm, that there's a voice calling, and I've answered because I've been sent by God. We each are called by God. We may not choose to wear camel hair, eat locusts and honey, and go out into the wilderness. Joyce Leonard is very relieved at that. <laughs> she says, that's my rescue story right there. I don't have to do that. But we're each called every single day in how we choose to care for one another and what we choose to respond to. We have the choice to respond to ugliness with more ugliness. 
We have the choice to respond to a strange Christmas season with anger. We could go through the five cycles of grief in a day, right, man? Anger, bargaining, denial. We could go through all of that in a day, but we choose, and God helps us, we choose joy. So who are you? And what do you say about yourself? I invite you to hold that in your heart this week. As you go about your day, as you watch 40 more Hallmark movies, as you maybe go home and watch that Muppet Christmas Carol because your pastor said it's good literature. Um, who are you? What do you respond to? And better yet, how do you respond? Because if you're looking for joy this season, you'll find it. If you're looking for disappointment, you don't have to look far. But if you're looking for a voice that's calling out, they're all around us. And we're going to find unexpected ways to respond. I invite you to share kindness and patience warmth and grace with your neighbors, but also with yourself this season. It's been on my heart this morning to say that we are in dark times. I don't remember which politician said it was going to be a long, dark winter. Don't tell me. I don't want to know. One of them said it. They all say a lot. But he went wrong. If we step out of denial and own, this is this is hard. Loneliness is hard. I desperately miss walking into church and handing my toddler to someone. Just handing them. And having the peace that comes knowing somebody's loving on my child. And that it takes a village. I miss that. We miss a lot of things these days. Anxiety and depression are real. Mental illness is real. And this is a season that's pushing all of us to our limits. So I invite you to share kindness with yourselves. To give yourself grace as you need and give grace that you need to somebody else. We don't know the things that we all bring into this sanctuary. We don't know the things that we carry, the things that trip us. I've said many times in my life that if it were not for God, I couldn't get through it. Couldn't. Couldn't face it. Couldn't face the injustice of it. And I've watched people that I love not make it. Because heartache is real. And it's hard to find joy in the darkness at times. But like Kindle this morning, we're called to testify to the light. We're called to be a lamppost along the way saying, this is, this is where it is. You're not alone. God's been with you. God is with you. And God will be with you. I pray that if you are in the dark, you can reach out. I pray whatever energy you have, you can be a lamppost to somebody who's struggling. Because as Ebenezer Scrooge sings with Muppets, he says, with an open heart that is wide awake, I do make this promise every breath I take will be used now to sing your praise and beg you share my days with a loving guarantee that even if we hurt, I will hold you close with a thankful heart. May our eyes be open to the light. May our hands be willing to hold one another. 
May we seek to testify to the light, knowing that there are those around you who so desperately need it. Amen. In response this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able. We are going to say the refrain of one of my favorite hymns, Here I Am, Lord. And let that be our prayer this morning. That as the voice calls, we will say, Here I am, send me.